Hey, what's going on? Jens here. In today's video, I'm going to tell you everything I know. I'm going to basically tell you how to photograph colliding water droplets. And before we start, there's one very important thing. This kind of photography is highly addictive. Let's do it. The most important question is how to produce the droplets, how to get the perfect timing so that they collide and you can take the image of this nice splash the umbrella at the end. Therefore I have brought two examples. The first is a very cheap solution. This is a medical equipment which costs about one euro, which constantly drops droplets and yeah, you have, it is a little difficult to control the whole process, but it works the same. This is the MyUp system of Roller, which is perfect for beginners because you can control everything. The size of the droplets, the delay, the number of droplets, and it is perfect to adjust the process to get a nice splash in your image. The MyUp system is about 150 euro, which seem to be pretty expensive for something which just drops droplets. But compared to other pro versions, and when you think of the control you get about the process, I think it's actually a pretty good deal. But when you first do it, I'd really recommend to, for example, you can also use a plastic bag filled with water, cut a very small hole which produces the droplet. It will work as well. Of course, you have, you cannot control the delay of the droplets, but you will get some first pretty good results. And then you can decide if you want to upgrade or go with the cheap versions, which work almost the same. As a drop height, I have worked with around 40 to 50 centimeter, which puts a lot of energy into the process, which makes a huge splash possible, allowing me to capture several different images. As a camera, I actually did a little cheating because I have used the Photron Fastcam Nova S16, which is able to shoot 16,000 images at full resolution, which means 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel. So it's actually a one megapixel camera but it is a high-speed camera, so I can review every setting I chose and see, okay, I need a little bit of more water, a little more or less delay to get the perfect collision at the end. Let's take a quick look at the gear and aesthetics I've used. I have used the 90 millimeter macro lens of Sony because, yeah, the splash is pretty small, so I had to get very close. And we had to shoot at a very, very fast shutter speed. In my case, I just chose a high frame rate. What do you think, what shutter speed or frame rate I have used to shoot this footage? It is actually shot with a shutter speed of 1000 of a second. And as you can see, it is totally blurry. We have so much motion blur, it is not usable at all. So you need a shutter speed of at least one four thousandth of a second. So when you use a flash, get sure to make a very short, bright flash, like when using a 128. And now let's talk about the biggest problem, and that is actually lighting. Because we are in the macro distance, I had to use an aperture of f16 at a frame rate of 7,000 images raw per second. And you can imagine that you need a lot of light to get a proper illuminated image at the end. When you use a flash, it is actually no problem because the flash is bright enough. But unfortunately, I do not own one or two flashes which can fire 7,000 times per second. So I had to figure out a very bright continuous light solution and that was actually kind of tricky. I actually used the two brightest light source I own, the Godox SL150 with this reflector which did not really work very well because the light was still too diffuse and I actually needed something to focus the light on a spot where I took the footage on. So luckily I did own a second light source, a torch which got 32,000 lumen, which works perfect, which was way more bright than the Godox SL, but at the end it died. I don't know, overheating, I don't know, but yeah, now it's broken, so. Anyway, to fix the light problem, I have actually used a lot of aluminum foil. I have put this around the bowl with water so that the reflections of the light source illuminated the droplets pretty okay and the results were actually quite satisfying. Let's switch back to the normal workflow with a camera and a flash. Therefore, I'd recommend to use a diffuser like this and then place one flash inside the box and use a remote to illuminate the back of the droplet 
and a second flash from the front to illuminate the whole scene. In droplet collision photography, it's all about the perfect timing. That's why I now want to share my settings I've used to take or create these collisions. There are actually two types of collisions. The first is the short umbrella and the second is the high splash umbrella shot. And for the first, I took 40 milliseconds, 80 milliseconds and 40 milliseconds for the second drop. For the high collision, everything is going much faster and that's why I choose 40, 35 and 40 milliseconds again. So if you've just seen in the footage, there are just a few milliseconds where the umbrella is opening up. So that is the moment where you have to fire with a flash. So when you use the manual system, it will be very challenging to hit that moment, but also a lot of fun because when you got the image, it is a lot of trial and error, but when you get it, it you will be really satisfied. When using the myops, it will be a lot easier because you can time the trigger and you will hit the umbrella every time. In the beginning of the video I told you that this kind of splash photography is pretty addictive. And the reason is, when you get the first umbrella perfectly into focus, the fun is just beginning. Because when you do the same settings, you will also get only the same umbrella. And then it is time to change the settings, the fluids. For example, I have used several different colors, fluids, like milk and oil and xanthan gum and mix everything together. Even the height of the fluid inside the cylinder will affect the image. Of course, the height of the drops, everything will change everything. So it is a lot of try and error. Even when you have the perfect umbrella and you just change one parameter just a little, you will have to adjust the other settings to get the perfect timing for the umbrella again. But at the end, you will get a totally new image and you never know what you get. And that is actually the fun part of this kind of photography. Change the background, the flash, the lightings, all the fluids, all the timing and the height and you just surprise yourself and see what you can get. When I told you that I use 40 milliseconds 35 40 or 40 80 milliseconds 40 this will work great for my setup at this height so maybe your height is just a little different so you have to adjust those values but it is a very good starting point so maybe it's not 40 it is like 35, so no big difference. I just want to tell you that probably small adjustment of those value need to be made when the setting changes just a little. And at the end, I got some tips for you. For example, how to set focus. And the answers, I have used putty and a pen. I have created droplets and droplets and droplets and marked the position with this pen inside the bowl so that the droplets hit the pen. Then I set manually focus on the pen and every umbrella was in the focus. After you've hit your first water drop collisions, I'd recommend to experiment with the fluids. For example, you could add milk or cream to the droplet fluid or some colors. This will not also affect the color of the image, but also the viscosity. And this affects the, the complete splash, the umbrella building, just basically a completely new image. <music> 